Hello there viewers, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. We, on this episode, are returning to this 2006 Cadillac DTS with the 4.6 liter North Star dual overhead cam V8. We've got the drivetrain on the ground, the cradle's out. That's the transmission. We've got the shock strut, steering gear, brake assembly, and engines over there upside down, inverted on the stand. Uh, I've got some new parts that have trickled in. We have new valve cover gaskets here. I've already gone and taken the liberty of resealing these, uh, but I'm not going to install them just yet because, like I said, that engine's upside down. Um, what we need to do next is continue our disassembly. So what I would like to do is pull this oil pan off of here. We need to find out if this bolt is broken off in the front structure or not, uh, or maybe it's just missing. Uh, if it's broken off, we'll extract it in order to install a new bolt but I want to get this pan off for a reseal because I do believe it's been leaking. Um, I've got a new rear main seal that's been ordered and on the way, uh, but most importantly, while this is off, I want to inspect this, uh, this block skirt right here and see if this is part of the main cap structure for the crankshaft or if this is just a standalone block skirt. If this is a standalone skirt, we're going to pull this skirt off as well and reseal that, but I do not know how that's gonna work out just yet. So let's continue with our disassembly. Lower oil pan has to come off first, so let's get going with that, and we'll see how this job progresses. So, stay tuned, because this is going to continue to be a very good series of videos. Opening Z hood. So, this thing should come apart fairly easily at this point. Uh, one thing to note regarding my own comfort level here is that although I have worked on these North Stars in the past, I have never been this deep into one. So this is uh, definitely uncharted territory. At least for me. I know there's some viewers here that definitely know about this engine. That one wasn't tight. And we are missing one. You know what, let's just find out right now if that bolt that was missing is actually missing or not. I believe it was. Whoa, -ho! grab a toss. You guys fell down, sorry. Anyway, we'll see if that's broken off or if it was just missing. It seems to be threading in. Okay. Cool, I don't have to extract a broken bolt. They just uh, never put it back in, that's fine. All right, so there's a little tab right here and I think if I use some curvy angular pry bar action, I can get under this pan and just kinda pop this guy off of here. It's glued on pretty tight. The sealant. So I find that to be odd because I do believe there's supposed to be gasket in here and not sealant. And that's not just a block skirt. Looks like those are the main caps. All right, well, we're gonna reseal this anyway while we're here, because that's gross. I don't like what they've done with the place. Wipe all this down, get that sealant out of there. Yeah, this whole section of block right here is actually the main caps. And I'm not going to take that apart. We're not doing that. Okay. All righty. Ziz wheel coming in here. It's a lightly abrasive uh, polishing wheel. We're going to use this guy to get rid of all this uh, silicone sealant everywhere. Oh, loud noises. Headphone warning.
nice and shiny. I like it. Okay, so we wipe off the dust with a towel here. It's looking good. Let's get all of the uh, the silicone sealant off of the oil pan next. Which there's a there's a boatload of this stuff on here. Look at that. Way too much. Big old glob in that, in that hole right there. Look at that. It's not good. Another one. So this groove in here is actually kind of deep. I'm gonna try to go in with the uh, like the Dremel tool to dig out the rest of that sealant. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. That's a lot of sealant in there. But we've got to get it out.
Gasket material dog out of that groove that's in the pan here. That's a very deep groove. That's more substantial than what I thought it was. This is actually going to take a lot of sealant to, uh, to seal this thing back up. Okay. So now we'll blow it all off some more. Hit it with the brake clean. Clean off all the debris. the parts washing trash can right there begin shiny now this is gonna collect all the pieces of dust that are in there we can get it all pulled up in one area and then rinse it out because there is dust all over the place in there another another Yeah, see, look at all the stuff we rinsed out. It's like panning for gold. Except this is not gold, this is bearing and killing sealant. So we're panning for sealant. That's what it is. Look at all that in there. Rinse that business out. And we'll let gravity do our bidding. Pretty thick in there. Garden hose. Yep, we're gonna hose it out. It's aluminum, it won't hurt it. Shiny! Make you guys nice and shiny. Okie dokes, let's grab a 13 mil and I'm gonna pull off this oil filter housing business right here because I want to change the gasket behind that. I'm I'm not so certain it's actually a smart idea uh, to pull this block skirt off and attempt to reseal it. I uh, I, I feel compelled to do such things. But at the same time, these right here are the crankshaft main bolts on the top. And if I pull this off, I've got to replace all those bolts. So that actually comes with a quite a hefty expense. And I don't really think that that skirt is leaking, so it may not be necessary. this guy out of here though. There's that gasket. Oop. 
take a look at this guy right here. Yeah, it's also very flattened out. Mm. Let's take this housing with us. I'm gonna put a new uh, pressure sensor in this housing later on as well, that's been ordered. Okay, decision has been made. Uh, I went digging around for a set of replacement bolts. So we're gonna need four, eight, 12, 16, 20 bolts. These bolts are going for about uh, $18.99, uh, between $18.99 and $22.99 per individual bolt. Um, no, <laughs> we're not gonna do that. I'm not gonna spend a couple hundred dollars on bolts to reseal something that's not leaking. Oh, we also have to replace these bolts here too. So um, since this thing does not appear to have a leak around the block skirt, I'm not going to remove the windage tray. We're not gonna remove half of the block and split this block in half just to attempt to reseal something that's not leaking. We're just, we're not gonna go that far into it. So what I'm gonna do at this point is finish wiping this down and we're going to re-gasket that engine oil pan. Uh, by the way, I found that that pan actually does have a gasket. So it appears what had happened was is somebody removed the gasket and then filled the gasket groove full of sealant and then stuck the thing back on. So that's uh, apparently not the appropriate way to do it. Um, what I'm gonna do, since this is gonna be the third time this gasket's been redone, is I'm gonna stick some gasket material, the actual gasket that goes in there, and I'm gonna break my own rule and I'm going to apply some sealant uh, as well into that groove. So the groove is gonna get some sealant, we're gonna put a gasket on it, and then we're gonna put a light coating of sealant on top of that gasket, and that's gonna ensure that this thing is gonna stay sealed up and will not continue to leak in the future. Okie dokes, back at the oil pan, we're gonna throw some sealant in this groove for a couple reasons. Number one, it had some sealant in there. So I don't know if GM's warranty, because my customer said this had been done at GM under warranty once, I don't know if their warranty was to remove the rubber gasket and just load this full of sealant uh, and then reinstall it in order to replace uh, the gasket assembly. I'm not sure if that's what they were doing or not, or if uh, somebody else had warranty that. Um, and they just elected to do such things. Uh, regardless, the little dingle ball unit that I was using to, uh, to clean out all that old sealant left a bunch of nicks and scratches and whatnot. There's imperfections in the surface uh, that were not machined into it when it was originally done. And I would fear that this gasket may actually leak uh, due to that. So what I'm gonna do is a combo of both uh, both repairs. I'm going to throw a little bit of RTV sealant in there. Nothing special, it's just gasket maker for uh, oil applications. We're going to throw a bead of sealant in it and then put the uh, actual rubber gasket back in and then we'll be able to reinstall this unit. And again, some of you guys might not like the idea of pulling that or uh, not pulling off the uh, that block skirt but the problem is is this is a North Star aluminum engine block and when you go to remove those main crankshaft bolts all 20 of them or whatever they uh, they like to take the threads out with them in which case you have to time cert the holes meaning I have to pull the rotating assembly out of it and turn myself into a machine shop which takes this uh 21 hour job and makes it like a 60 hour job and we're not going to do that so i've decided as a matter of risk mitigation it's probably a very bad idea to attempt to continue to disassemble an engine which was never designed to be disassembled I'm just not the North Star guru. There's there's folks out there that build these things. But uh, that is a skill that I have not developed and uh, frankly, I don't want to. I mean, these are cool engines and all, but that doesn't mean I want to specialize in them. Hope I don't run out of sealant. Getting a little low here. Almost. 
a little bit more over here. Okay, that's looking good. That was a little light on where I started, so add some more in there. There we go. Okay, so I've got a decent bead of sealant running all the way around the perimeter of this pan. Let's grab the gasket and work this gasket into this pan and around that sealant. Let's start her off on this corner over here. It's gonna get a little messy. That's just how this is. But I think if we take some care, we can mitigate the nasty of the mess. There we go. See it's starting to push out from the sides. That's what we want. I'd like to create a very good seal all the way around the perimeter of this business here. I'm not gonna smash this down all the way. I wanna let it squeeze out as it presses into the pan. I think that would probably be best for, uh, for sealant distribution. I think we're good. Because that pan surface, or that block surface back there rather, was extremely flat and it's all nice and clean now. Wipe away this extra. Okay, I think this is good. Let's, uh, let's run this thing over to the engine block and get it flipped over, smushed down in position, and then all that leftover sealant underneath of this gasket is gonna squeeze its way out and create a good seal between the gasket and the pan. Alrighty, moment of truth is coming in. Give this one final wipe down. I just blew it all off again with, uh, with some air pressure. Make sure everything's clean and there's no dirt and whatnot on here. Let's get rid of all of this. Now we're ready to bring the pan in, set it down, and get this thing bolted back together. The pan. Let me make sure I have this in the right direction. Uh, this one goes, oh, which way does it go? I forget. It's gonna go this way, okay. We're gonna give it a flip and lower it right down in position, eyeballing the bolt holes. There we go. A little bit of a press. And I'm gonna start dropping in the bolts. And we'll get them threaded in. Hey, Seuss! Yeah, What's up, brother? What you got the oh. better stuff? The better -er stuff? That's the same price. Oh, I love it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank Good you. man. See you later. Yes, sir. Hey, you coming to work tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. See you later. To get them all started by hand or by socket rather whatever you know what i mean now this requires a two pass torquing sequence they're asking for uh 71 foot pounds on the first pass and then they're asking for uh, i think 109 on the second pass. A couple more bolts over here. Looks like I'm down to three more fasteners. And those are gonna be over here on the front side. Right there. Drop these guys in. Can't get my flanges in that one. Okay, 
So now what I'll do, I'll grab the little impact, run all these guys down real quick, and then we will bring them up to torque with the torque wrench. Actual picks. Let's see if we get some sealant smearing action going on here. See it clamping down? Good. Give it back to me. Seriously, give it back. There. Excellent, okay. So they're all snug down. Got the quarter inch torque wrench here. It's set for 71 foot pounds, inch pounds, excuse me, 71 inch pounds. I'm thinking 71 foot pounds might be a little much, just a wee bit. Thick. Now we're compressing all of that sealant. See it squirting out? It's gonna make for a good seal. That's what we want. And I know I always preach about not breaking your torque wrench, about not using sealant on a gasket because the gasket is in fact the sealant, but that's the rule, not the exception. And this engine is quite exceptional. Okay, I didn't break the wrench. That still feels like 71. No, no, no. How about, uh, let's do this one next. Fix. Look at how much that uh, that ran down Look here. There's space at these bolts now. Definitely space there because I never uh, bothered to thread that one down. Must have missed it. Speed up. No, you don't. There. Run that one down. 71 again. Okay, these are all at 71 now. Let me go back and get them at a, I think it's 109. I'm gonna go look it up real quick. Just to make sure. Be right back. Okay, how about 106? I read the specs. 106 inch pounds, so there's 100, 105, 106. Clicks.
missed one. We'll triple click it to make up for it. There we go. Okay. 106 inch pounds of torque on all of the oil pan fasteners. This pan is resealed. Ooh, that one needed another, another click. This pan's resealed. We're good to go on this segment. I do not think I have any other parts here that, are, that need to go on until I flip this engine back over to do the valve covers. I'm still waiting on this seal right here and that, uh, uh, what you call it, that, um, that oil pressure sender. So what I want to do is get this thing back together with that oil, uh, oil bypass adapter business or the oil filter adapter. And then we're going to wheel this outside, pressure wash it all off with the bottom draining down. That way we don't get a bunch of water back into the engine. Just give it a quick spray down to get rid of all this uh, remaining nasty. Then we can roll this thing back over and get the top side put back together. However, guys, we're gonna save that one for another episode. Uh, this one's uh, running about the, uh, the average length in which we try to work things. So uh, having said that, fellas, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this series on this 4.6 Cadillac North Star. Oh, we have to do the rear main seal also. We'll do that later too. Uh, hope you enjoyed this series. Let me know what you think about this engine in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button right down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. End of engine assembly, end of video, end of North Star for now, end of transmission.